Beneath the tranquil waters of Vortex Spring, Florida, lies a world of mesmerizing beauty and treacherous depths, calling to the adventurous souls who dare to explore its secrets. But beware, because beneath its tranquil surface lurks a labyrinth of caves. It was into these murky depths that Ben McDaniel descended, a journey into darkness from which he would never return. Even with the best technology and countless volunteers giving it their all, we still don't know what happened to Ben. So join us as we delve into the depths of this chilling mystery, unraveling the events of that fateful day in 2010, and uncovering the secrets that lie hidden beneath the surface. On August 20, 2010, the Vortex Spring Dive Shop was shaken by the disappearance of Ben McDaniel. The employees sprang into action when they realized that Ben's truck hadn't moved in two days, despite the bustling summer crowds at Vortex Springs. For two long days, the dive shop bustled with activity, oblivious to the fact that he hadn't returned from the dive. And when they noticed Ben's truck, their instincts told them something was amiss. With a growing sense of dread, the employees sounded the alarm, setting in motion a desperate quest to uncover the truth about Ben's disappearance. But first, let's rewind a bit and talk about Ben's backstory. Born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, Ben was a true go-getter from the start. He grew up alongside his two younger brothers in Collierville, mastering the piano, rock climbing, and diving, all before he was out of his teens. His adventurous spirit led him to dive into the world of construction, starting his own business and fearlessly tackling challenges head on. But McDaniel's life was a whirlwind of challenges and heartache. In April 2010, Ben desperately needed a break since he was struggling in his personal and professional life. His parents were getting a divorce, money was tight, and he was still hurting from his little brother Paul's tragic death two years ago. Two years earlier, Ben found Paul unconscious at home, and despite trying to help, he couldn't save him. Unable to deal with the stress, he went to his parents' beach house in Santa Rosa Beach for a change of scenery. During life's storms, Ben found comfort in the depths of the ocean. Diving became his sanctuary, a place to escape turmoil and find renewal. And that's when he found out about Vortex Springs, a diver's paradise filled with mystery and thrills. Nestled in the heart of Florida, this captivating dive spot calls out to adventurers with its crystal clear waters and a constant embrace of 68 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a novice, Vortex Springs offers an unforgettable experience for divers of all levels, drawing them into its depths with promises of wonder and excitement. But entry into this aquatic realm comes with its own set of rules and precautions. Before setting off on the underwater journey, proper certification and a signed release of liability are required to ensure your safety and the preservation of this underwater wonderland. Open water diving, cavern diving, and cave diving are all on the menu at Vortex Springs, each requiring its own specialized certification to unlock its secrets. So, what's with all the safety procedures, you ask? See, there's a clear difference between cavern diving and cave diving. While both are thrilling, cave diving requires an expertise that few possess. With only 1% of divers achieving certification, the risks are significant. Following numerous tragedies, including 13 divers meeting their fate over a decade at Vortex Spring, Florida faced a tough decision, close the caves or implement strict safety measures. And so, the gate was installed, a stern barrier allowing access only to certified divers. Now here's the kicker. Only certified cave divers hold the key to unlock the gate, and unfortunately, Ben didn't have that key. The diving enthusiast with dreams of exploring the underwater world frequented Vortex Spring, aiming to level up his diving skills. But get this, despite his beginner status, Ben often ventured into the depth solo, defying the odds with his adventurous spirit. Chuck and Eduardo Turan were both seasoned pros at Vortex Spring who witnessed Ben's late-night dives firsthand. With a mix of concern and camaraderie, they watched over Ben's dives, 
keeping an eye to ensure his safe return from the murky abyss below. But here's where things take a wild turn. Early evening, just before sunset on August 18, 2010, Ben suited up, strapped on his tanks, and submerged. Two divers passed him as they were swimming out. One of them was Eduardo, the commercial diver who works for Vortex. He knew Ben was sneaking into the cave by jimmying the gate, so he swam back to the cave and used his key to open it for Ben. Sometimes Ben stayed down so long in the cave that Taran would sit on the bank waiting for bubbles in the glassy water, a signal that Ben was decompressing. No one watched for bubbles on August 18th. Ben's truck, the lone vehicle after the spring closed for the day, went unnoticed by staff for two days. It was parked within sight of the dive shop. Taran realized on the second day that no one had seen any sign of Ben. He called the Holmes County Sheriff's Office. The lawmen immediately unfurled yellow crime scene tape and tied it to trees. The McDaniels got wind of the situation and wasted no time hauling down to Florida to lend a hand in the search efforts. Cadaver dogs were brought in, sniffing out a scent on the water's surface. It was clear the search was taking a dive, literally. To make matters more intense, two tanks belonging to Ben were found lurking just outside the cave's entrance, raising the stakes even higher. Air tanks were found at a strange place, according to cave divers. When they enter a cave, they place tanks like life-saving breadcrumbs along their path as they go in a cave so they have plenty of air when they come out. Plus, the tanks contained only air, which was suspicious. If Ben had read books on cave diving, like his parents said he had, he would have known that diving deep required a gas mix. Without it, divers will feel intoxicated and their decision-making becomes harder. The lawmen canvassed the area around Vortex Spring. Cadaver dogs sniffed the ground for hours. They found a scent of a decomposed body in two spots, one along the bank and one in the water. In the first days, Ben's parents paced the banks. They sat at picnic tables. Every time bubbles appeared, they hoped a diver would emerge with news of their son. Captain Harry Hamilton, the Holmes County investigator on the case, knew they needed a special set of skills to tackle this mission. So, he rallied the troops and put out a call for help. And let me tell you folks, what followed was nothing short of remarkable. 16 brave divers, fueled by determination and grit, embarked on a 36-day marathon search deep within the cave's labyrinthine passages. But it was Ed Sorensen, a seasoned cave diver and recovery specialist, who truly went above and beyond, venturing further into the cave than anyone had dared before. But despite Ed Sorensen's valiant efforts, he came up empty-handed. Not a single shred of evidence suggested that Ben had ventured into the deepest recesses of the cave. And get this, Ben's towering stature, standing at six foot two and weighing in at around 220 pounds, posed a major obstacle. Many of the cave's tight crevices simply wouldn't accommodate his frame. With no sign of decomposition in the water, it seemed like Ben had just vanished without a trace. The anger and frustration levels were growing by the day. Cameras taken into the cave couldn't reach the tiny spots. Trained divers didn't swim to areas where the chance of death was greater. And slowly but surely, the McDaniels became convinced that's where Ben's body was floating. Out of frustration, the McDaniels offered a $10,000 reward for anyone brave enough to swim into the passage. Incensed cave divers became frenzied on internet chat boards. And soon enough, the reward which started at a modest sum skyrocketed to a whopping $30,000. But some experienced divers were wary, fearing that the lure of money might lead to unqualified divers risking their lives in the treacherous depths. And then tragedy struck again. In 2012, another diver named Larry Higginbotham lost his life in the cave. While it's unclear if Higginbotham was searching for Ben, the McDaniels had seen enough. They swiftly pulled the plug on the reward, unwilling to risk any more lives in the pursuit of answers. But here's the thing. Ben's truck was parked outside, his belongings neatly stowed away inside. His wallet, cash, cards, cell phone, clothes, diving log, keys, 
all accounted for. The cadaver dogs initially picked up a scent, but what did it mean? With so many unanswered questions swirling, the McDaniels turned to Lynn Marie Cardi, a seasoned private investigator, to crack the case wide open. Lynn Marie Cardi didn't shy away from exploring the darkest corners of this mystery. And boy, did she uncover some spine-tingling theories? One possibility she floated? Ben met his demise in the cave, but his body was whisked away before the authorities arrived on the scene. Or, get this, maybe he met foul play on the land nearby, and the whole story of his nighttime dive was nothing but a smokescreen to hide his vanishing act. But hold your horses, because the quest for answers was far from over. Nineteen long months after Ben's disappearance, David Twist, commander of help, search and rescue dog team, step it up to the plate. Armed with determination and a trusty canine companion, he scored the woods and surrounding areas, sniffing out every lead. While the cave didn't yield any clues, David couldn't shake the feeling that something sinister had unfolded in that very spot. And then came the scientific investigation. Over the next few months, they conducted a staggering 30-plus tests on the waters of Vortex Spring, hoping to catch a whiff of any telltale signs of foul play. But alas, the results came up empty-handed, leaving investigators grasping at straws in their search for the truth. To make matters worse, there were rumors that Lowell Kelly, the former owner of Vortex Spring, was acting suspicious. Rumor has it, he turned away a diver on the very night Ben vanished. What was he hiding? Unfortunately, Kelly himself met a mysterious demise just a year after Ben's disappearance. Coincidence? I think not. And then there's Larry Higginbotham, the seasoned diver who met his tragic end in 2012. With 20 years of military service under his belt and all the proper certifications, he was the picture of preparedness. But when he failed to resurface after his designated dive time, alarm bells started ringing. His girlfriend sprang into action, making frantic calls in a desperate bid to locate him. The plot thickens even further, my friends, because the state of Florida, in a baffling move, issued a death certificate for Ben in 2013, despite his body remaining undiscovered. Yet, despite the official declaration, the search for answers rages on. Podcasts, documentaries, and online forums buzz with speculation, each seeking to crack the code of Ben's enigmatic disappearance. And the McDaniel family? They're not giving up the fight. They deserve closure, and they've got a legion of supporters backing them every step of the way. Of course, there were whispers that suggest Ben himself might have orchestrated his own disappearance to start a new life somewhere else. But the McDaniels weren't buying it. Ben had first-hand experience of the heartbreak his family endured after losing his brother, Paul. He wouldn't willingly subject them to that heartbreak again. And then there's Spooner, his beloved furry companion. Ben cherished that loyal friend and wouldn't dream of leaving him behind to fend for himself. Not to mention, his love life was blossoming with Emily Greer, a new flame who illuminated his world. So you see, the idea of Ben faking his own demise just doesn't add up. But here's the million-dollar question. If Ben's not lurking in the shadows, then where in the world could he be? Let us know your theories in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting diving stories. Until next time.